So in this chapter, we are going to learn the concept of reflection of light. First of all, we should know what is reflection. Reflection is the return of light into the same medium after striking a surface. For example, when the light of sun strikes the surface of mirror, it returns back. This is basically reflection of light. Laws of reflection. There are few laws of reflection which you need to learn that the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. For example, this is a plane surface. Okay. Now when a ray hit, this is basically the incident ray. This is basically an incident ray. When it hits the surface, it basically went back. This is the line of reflection. Now if we draw perpendicular on this plane, considering this point of reflection, then we will having we will be having two angles angle of reflection and angle angle of incidence and angle of reflection this angle of incidence will always be equal to this angle of reflection and the second law is the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal at the point of incident lie in the same plane some terms related with reflection incident ray the light ray striking a reflecting surface is called the incident ray point of incidence the point at which the incident ray strikes the reflecting surface is called the point of incidence. Then we have reflected ray, the light ray obtained after reflection from the surface in the same medium which we have already seen in the previous slide in which the incident ray is traveling is called the reflected ray. Then we have normal, normal is basically the perpendicular drawn. This is the surface, this is incident ray, this is a reflection ray. Now if we draw perpendicular to the same point, this will be considered as the normal. Now then we have angle of incidence, the angle which the incident ray makes with the norm at the point of incidence is called the angle of incidence. It is denoted by the small letter i. This is the angle of incidence. Let's suppose this is incident ray and this is a reflection ray. Now we draw a normal. This will be the angle of incidence and this will be the angle of reflection. Angle of reflection is the angle which the reflected ray make with the normal at the point of incidence is called the angle of reflection it is denoted by the letter r now we have plane of incidence the plane containing the incident ray and the normal is called the plane of incidence plane of reflection the plane containing the reflected ray and the normal is called the plane of reflection formation of image by reflection types of image we have basically two types of image real image and virtual image a real image is formed due to the actual intersection of the reflected rays while a virtual image is formed when the reflected rays appear to meet when produced backward. A real image can be obtained on the screen while a virtual image cannot be obtained on the screen. A real image is inverted with the respect to the object but a virtual image is erect with the respect to the object. For example, real image is the image of distinct object formed by a concave mirror. Virtual image is the image of an object formed by a plane mirror or by a convex image of a point object formed by a plane mirror this is how the diagram will look like image of an extended object formed by a plane mirror this is basically how the extended object will be seen this image will be made behind the screen position of image the image i is as far behind the mirror as the object o is in front of it that is the perpendicular distance of the image from the mirror is equal to the perpendicular distance of object from the mirror that is the perpendicular distance this distance will be equal to this distance now lateral inversion the interchange of the left and right sides in the image of an object in a plane mirror is called lateral inversion many times if you have seen yourself in mirror your left hand appears to be right and your right hand appears to be left this is the concept of lateral inversion the letters on the front of an ambulance are written laterally inverted so that the driver of the vehicle moving ahead of the ambulance reads the word laterally inverted as ambulance in his rear view mirror and gives away to the ambulance to pass first. This is basically the image of ambulance. This is laterally inverted and when it appears in the rear mirror of a car or of a bike, it appears as erect. Now he or she, whoever is driving the car, can read the ambulance is behind the car and they will let them pass. Now characteristic of the image formed by a plane mirror. It is upright, it is virtual, it is of same size as the object in the case of plane mirror only and it is also laterally inverted. 
The location of the image is given by the fact that image is situated at the same perpendicular distance behind the mirror as the object is in front of. This is the perpendicular distance from object and this is the perpendicular distance from image. Now images formed in two inclined mirrors. The number of images formed depends on the angle theta between two mirrors. For example case 1 if theta between mirror is such that n equals to 360 by theta is odd then the number of images n when the object is placed asymmetrically between the mirror the number of images n minus 1 when the object is placed symmetrically that is on the bisector of the angle between the mirror for example if theta is 72 degree then n equals to 5 number of images will be 5 now in case 2 if n is even the number of images is always n minus 1 for all position of object between the mirror example if the angle between two mirror is 60 degree then the number of image will be 360 degree by 60 degree equals to 6 minus 1 equals to 5 now coming to the images formed in a pair of mirrors placed parallel to each other this is basically infinite for two mirrors kept parallel to each other an infinite number of images are formed for an object kept in between them application of this concept you might have seen in the barber shop now coming to the images formed in a pair of mirrors placed perpendicular to each other for two mirrors kept perpendicular to each other three images are formed for an object kept in between them this is basically the diagram uses of plane mirrors in the barber shop for seeing the hair at the back of head here two mirrors facing each other are fixed on the opposite walls at the front and back of the viewer this is done to give the barber a wide view of the customer in a periscope two parallel plane mirror each inclined at 45 degree with vertical walls are placed facing each other so that the view outside the wall can easily be seen by the viewer spherical mirrors a reflecting surface which is a part of a sphere is called a spherical mirror it has a silvered surface a reflecting surface a convex mirror or it can also have a concave terms related to a spherical mirror first is center of curvature center of curvature of a spherical mirror is the center of a sphere of which the mirror is a part this is basically the center of curvature radius of curvature the radius of a sphere of which the spherical mirror is a part is called the radius of curvature of the mirror this is this is basically the radius of curvature now pole, the geometrical center of the spherical surface of mirror is called pole of the mirror. This is basically the pole of mirror, geometrical center. Now aperture, aperture is basically the plane surface area of the mirror through which light rays enter and fall on the mirror is basically the aperture. Then we have principal axis. It is a straight line joining the pole of the mirror to its center of curvature. Now ray diagrams for formation of images in a concave mirror. Case 1 when the object is at infinity. When the object is at infinity, the image will appear real, inverted and diminished to appointment means it will appear small as compared to the object. Case 2 when the object is at far distance. When the object is at a far distance, the image will appear in the focal plane of the mirror and it will be real, it will be inverted and it will be highly diminished. Matlab, it will be highly diminished means so small then case 3 when the object is beyond the center of curvature then the image will appear between the focus and the center of curvature this is where the image will appear it will be real it will be inverted it will be diminished this see this inverted and this is so small as compared to object see the object and see the image now when the object is at the center of curvature, when the object is at the center of curvature, the image is also at the center of curvature. Image will also at the center of curvature. It will be real, but it will, it will be inverted. That is why we are basically taking this downwards. It will be of the same size as that of object. No greater, nothing diminishing concept. It will be of same size. Case 5. When the object is between the center of curvature and focus, when the object is between the center of curvature and focus, the image is beyond the center of curvature and it is real, inverted, magnified means it will look bigger than the object really. When the object is at the focus F, when the object is at the focus F, the image will be at infinity, it will be real, it will be inverted, it will be highly, highly, highly magnified because of the parallel line. Case 7. When the object is between the F and pole, focus and pole, then the image will be 
then the image will appear behind the mirror it will be virtual it will be upright not inverted and it will also be magnified see this is object and image is formed behind the mirror behind the mirror and it is basically upright it is not inverted and it is also magnified bigger than the object now here we are going to summarize all the positioning when the object is placed at infinity position of image is at the focus size is diminished to a point and nature will be real and inverted when the position of object is placed at a very far distance image will appear in focal plane and that will be highly diminished real and inverted image when the position of object is placed beyond the center of curvature image will appear between the center of curvature and focus it will appear diminished and real and inverted when the position of object is placed at the center of curvature image will also appear at the center of curvature and of the same size real and inverted when the position of object is placed between the center of curvature and focus image will appear beyond the center of curvature the image will be magnified image will look bigger than the object and it will also look real and inverted when the position of object is placed at the focus the position of image will be at infinity highly magnified real and inverted when the position of object is between the focus and pole then image will appear behind the mirror it will be magnified it will be virtual and upright in all these seven scenario only seventh case has the case scenario where image will appear virtual and upright now day diagram for formation of image in a convex mirror when the object is in front of convex mirror the image is between the pole and the focus f on the other side of mirror it is virtual upright and diminished this is how the image will appear between the focus and the pole between the focus and the pole so position of the object in the convex mirror if it is placed at infinity position of image will be at the focus size will be diminished to a point nature will be virtual and upright so in all the cases of convex mirror virtual image will appear another position when the object is posed at any other point rather than infinity the position of image will be between focus and pole the image will be diminished will look small and the nature of image will be virtual and upright a relationship between focal length and the radius of curvature the focal length of a spherical mirror is equal to half of its radius of curvature that is f equals to by 2r sign convention for the measurement of distances all the distances are measured from the pole of mirror taken as origin the rays are made incident from the left the distances measured along the principal axis in the direction of incident light are positive while those opposite to the incident light are negative the distances above the principal axis are taken positive and those below the principal axis are taken negative formula for the spherical mirrors 1 by f equals to 1 by u plus 1 by v magnification length of image by length of object equals to distance of image by distance of object m equals to i by o equals to minus v by u uses of spherical mirrors are uh, uses of convex uses of concave mirror as a shaving mirror it is used when a concave mirror is held near the face it gives an upright and magnified image it is also used as a reflector the torch torch light and the red light of automobile cycles a concave polished metallic surface is used as a reflector to obtain a parallel beam of light for this the source of light is placed at the focus of concave reflector the rays of light from the bulb fall on the concave reflector which after reflection form a parallel beam as a doctor's head mirror if a parallel beam of light is incident on a concave mirror the mirror focuses the beam to a point This fact enables us to use it as a doctor's head mirror to concentrate a light beam on a small area of the body parts such as teeth, nose, throat, ear, etc. to be examined. For this a parallel beam of light is made to fall on concave mirror attached to the band tied at the forehead of doctor examining the body part. The concave mirror then focuses the beam on the body. Uses of convex mirror as a reflector in street lamps a convex polished metallic surface is used in the street lamp as a reflector so as to diverge light over a large area as a rear view mirror a convex mirror diverges the incident light beam and always form a virtual small and erect image behind the mirror between its pole and focus this fact enables the driver to use it as a rear view mirror in vehicles to see all the traffic approaches from behind because it gives a wider view to them 
Although a plane mirror can also be used for this purpose, but the convex mirror provides a much wider view as compared to plane mirror of the same size. Now coming to the difference between concave and convex mirror. Convex mirror is made by silvering the inner surface of a part of the hollow sphere, so reflection takes place from the bulging surface. It is made conve concave mirror is made by silvering the outer surface of a part of the hollow sphere, so reflection takes place from the inner surface. Concave mirror in the concave mirror the light rays incident on it converge after reflection, while in the convex mirror the light rays incident on it diverge after reflection. The image formed by it is real as well as virtual. For all position of the object at or beyond the focus, the image is real. While for position of the object between the focus and the pole, the image is virtual. Image formed by it is always virtual for all position of the object in front of it. So that's all in this lecture. See you in the next chapter.